Hi everyone, welcome back to another uh, ham radio video. This is the follow-up video to whether you should either upgrade your 7610 to a 7760 or perhaps go ahead and purchase the 7760 over the 7610. And you get a lot more features on the 7760 versus the 7610, especially for the cost difference, which is about $2,600 as of August 2025. First, let's quickly review the features and performance of the 7760 versus the 7610, plus talk about an upgrade and key features of the 7760 that was not out or mentioned when my previous video was made, and how this actually relates to something I mentioned in my last video related to the L-Craft K4. So first off, let's go through the features of the 7760 versus the 7610. And especially, we're just basically going over the key features that stand out over between the two radios. So obviously, first thing up here on my chart is the 7760 is a 200-watt radio, where the 7610 is a 100-watt radio. Obviously, you have a separated head and RF deck on the 7760. And of course, the 7610 is just all in one. All right, bandpass filters. So I'll put, um, I'll put this on screen uh, too. Uh, after I say this here. So bandpass filters, you have 15 total bandpass filters on the 7760, which 11 of those are in the HF bands. And on the 7610, you have 13 total bandpass filters, of which nine are in the HF bands. Now, uh, I took this from the 7760 technical report. So it shows you, as I mentioned in my last video, they made the uh, bandpass filters a little bit narrower to uh, make them uh, cut out unwanted noise and, and uh, broadcasts and this kind of stuff. So I put this on screen so you can see how they narrowed down um, the filters um, for what it was on like the 7610 and a couple other radios to the 7760. So I'll put that on screen there for you. I'll let you look at that for a moment here. All right, next thing, going back to my chart here, um, the DPT, DPD or digital pre-distortion. So the 7760 already has this built into it, while it's a firmware update on the 7610. So you can also have this on the 7610, but I just wanted to make a note of that for some of those that might be really interested in those two features. Both radios basically have it, just it's a firmware update on the 7610. All right, next thing that stands out is the RIDI and PSK encode and decode. So you have both of this on the 7760, while you only have um, RIDI encode and decode on the 7610. All right, next thing up, CW and RTTY or RIDI contest serial numbering. So you can do both of those on the 7760, while on the 7610, it's just CW that you can do. Next is uh, antenna ports. So the 7760 has four antenna ports, while the 7610 has two. This is mainly for your SO239 connections. All right, next thing, pretty, pretty obvious, obviously, the dual display. So I'll put a picture on here showing the, the 7760. So obviously on the 760, you have a seven inch main display and a 2.4 inch sub display, which I really like that sub display, by the way. Um, and then of course the 7610 just has the seven inch display, um, same size as the 7760. All right, last thing uh, here on features that I wanted to bring up and talk about was, and I mentioned this in my last video, um, is the DigiSelect. So on the 7760, the architecture of where the DigiSelect was placed is different than the 7610 and some of the other and, and the uh, other radios I'll mention here when I read this. So um, let me put this on the screen here. Um, so unlike the 7850 and 51 and 7610 and the IC7760, which is a direct sampling system, when preamp is turned on in the 7760, the preamp enhances the antenna signal first then DigiSelect filters out unwanted out-of-band signals. This makes it possible that the preamp works together with the DigiSelect. So that's a pretty, uh, pretty big difference between the 7760 and the 7610, as those are the two radios we're mainly talking about this moment. Okay, real quick, guys, just wanted to pause to take a moment to please ask you guys, if you haven't done so already, to go ahead and hit that like button, as it greatly helps out the channel. And... Uh, Many of the people that watch these ham radio videos, unfortunately, are not subscribed, so they'll miss notifications on future ham radio videos. So if you guys are not already subscribed, um, if you guys could go ahead and do so, I would greatly, greatly appreciate it. And I'd really like to get past the 5,000 subscriber mark. So if you guys can take a moment and do those things, go ahead and subscribe to the channel, hit notifications, and hit the like button. I would really, really appreciate it. 
And I'll be honest, if you guys are, are only interested in the ham radio videos, but not interested in flashlight videos or solar uh, videos, you guys can just ignore the other videos, but at least you won't miss any future ham radio videos. And after the uh, Tokyo Ham Fair, which we just had this past weekend, I'm going to be having some future uh, ham radio videos coming out with all the information that we received um, from this past weekend from Tokyo. So if you guys can do that, I would greatly appreciate it. Now, before making this follow-up video, I wanted to allow some time to go by to see what new information and updates would come out from what we already knew about the 7760. So what is new or change? When ICOM first released the 7760 information, they said that the control head had to be connected via wired LAN connection to the RF deck only, and that a Wi-Fi connection couldn't be used due to latency issues, but this has since changed. On April 17, 2025, ICOM released firmware version 1.12 for the 7760, which added the ability to connect the control head to the RF deck via Wi-Fi network, which also allows true remote operation of the 7760 RF deck from anywhere with a fast enough Wi-Fi speed. So real quick, put this on screen. This is the recommended Wi-Fi speeds from ICOM, so you have a, a pleasurable experience with no latency. Um, so the most important Wi-Fi connection is where the RF deck is located, so the RF deck to the control head, at least 10 megabytes per second, while the control head, uh, potentially operated remotely, to the RF deck connection needs to be at least 5 megabytes per second. So where the RF deck is located, that's the most important as far as your internet speed and connection. While, uh, and you know, as many, as many of us, when you travel or remote, op, uh, you're going to re uh, operate this um, head unit remotely, your internet speed uh, does not have to be as, as fast as where the RF deck is. So that's pretty good because sometimes when you travel, your internet speed is not quite as fast as that when you're at the house. Um, so that's very good to know. Plus, the other big thing that came out is now you can purchase extra 7760 control heads. And you not only can you do that, you can connect up to five control heads to one RF deck. So this changes a lot of things for a lot of hams. Maybe you have a ham that wants to share their location or they have a really good location with antennas and everything else. And they want to share that location with other hams. So other hams just have to have the control head. Uh, and they can connect remotely into the RF deck. Now, like I said, keep in mind, you can only connect you can only connect one control head at a time to the RF deck, but this makes uh, this makes a pretty big difference for a lot of hams that might want to do a lot of remote operations, especially sharing uh, remote operations. So that's that's pretty cool to find out. Now the part number for the uh, control head by itself is the RC-7760. Now not showing any favoritism to any particular retailer, I pull these up uh, from their websites. So in Gigaparts. The control head by itself was $2,500, and on HRO, it was $1,899.95. Both of these were uh, taken on August 25th, 2025, so as you can see, it definitely pays to shop around. And I'll be honest, a lot of times, uh, if you're going to buy some new ham radio gear, especially a radio or something like that, the best time usually to do that is around a ham radio show, as a lot of these retails will have sales right around the shows. So that, in my opinion, is probably one of the best times to make a purchase. So just keep that aware for anyone that may not already know that. In my previous video now, I talked about how the 7760 control head reminded me of the Elecraft K40 remote head project that Elecraft was working on. Plus, I mentioned that the Flex Radio already had their remote control head, the Maestro. But the Elecraft K40 looked very similar to what ICOM had done with the 7760's control head. And I thought back then to myself, wouldn't it be cool to, let's say, have two control heads for the 7760, one at your shack and one you could take with you and use for remote operation, provided you have a good enough Wi-Fi connection. Now, better yet, ICOM could build Wi-Fi into the 7760 control head, hint, hint, ICOM. While many hams would agree that Elecraft makes excellent radios with great features and performance, like their K4 series, they do tend to be a bit pricey. Just doing a little research on K4 pricing, so in order to get a dual independent receiver, like a 7610 or a 7760, with an, a built-in ATU, you will need a K4D model, which when I looked it up on August 25th, 2025, was showing on their website at $6,934.85. And if you wanted a remote control head for that, the K40, and they were taking back orders at the time of this screen capture on 825.25. That was $2,299.95. Now, 
Now, the big advantage I'll give to, uh, over to Elecraft for the K40 is the K40 remote control head for the K4 series does have Wi-Fi built in, unlike the ICOM 7760's control head. So again, hint, hint, ICOM. Um, so that's a pretty big advantage for the Elecraft fans and Elecraft K4 users. Now, getting back to the ICOM 7760 versus 7610, we discovered that in the latest Sherwood receiver test data, that the 7760 in performance is only one step up from the 7610, with the 7760 ranking 22nd on the list compared with the 7610's 23rd ranking. And despite Ray Novak's hinting that we might see a shakeup in the Sherwood rankings, this unfortunately did not occur, which is a bit disappointing to say the least. Now, the Yezu fans will be quite happy as the Yezus still occupy the top three spots on this list. So the Yezu FTDX 101, the D or the MP version, still holds number one, with uh, followed up by the FTDX 10 and number two, and the Yezu FT710 holding at number three. Now, a lot of hands would agree with me the FT710 was Yezu's answer to the ICOM 7300. So that's pretty, that's pretty huge for uh, Yezu to have the 710 number three on that list. And the Yellowcraft holding the number five slot with a K3S after the ICOM ICR8600, which is just a transceiver, transceiver not, oh, not, I'm sorry, it's not a transceiver, it's just a receiver, the R8600 holding number four. And the Yellowcraft K4D, since I mentioned, is holding number 14 on that same list. Now, when purchasing a radio, especially with the cost of some of these radios, if the performance numbers were the only measure of a radio, why, for example, did Rob Sherwood at one point admit to having three ICOM 7610s? When the AZU 101 series occupied the top of the list at the time. The ergonomics and layout of the radio and its UI or user interface are just as important, if not more so. I mean, who wants to operate and use a radio they hate or dislike just because of its rankings on a chart? Um, if you're not going to be happy operating the radio, uh, how well it is on its specs in, in, a, in, a, in the Rob Sherwood report, it's probably not as important as, as much as you like to use that radio and interface with it. Um, so that's probably the most important thing, right? As I'm sure many hams would agree. Now, for my humble opinion on whether you should upgrade from a 7610 to a 7760, I would say at this point, no. Especially if, like myself, you already have an amplifier to take the 100 watts from your 7610 and boost it up to 200 watts plus, especially considering the cost of a 7760 uh, versus selling your 7610. So real quick, put on the screen, I tried to do my best to find what a, 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 an average and a good condition uh, 7610 was going for in a used market. And what I could find was between $2,500 and $2,700. So the mean price of that is $2,600. So the cost of a new 7760 is $5,999.95, minus what you might get used if you sell your 7610, $2,600. Um, so that leaves a price difference of $3,399.95. So it's going to cost you $3,300 to upgrade from the 7610 to the 7760. Now let's take a different scenario. Let's take uh, scenario number two. You don't have a 7610 and want to step up to a larger, more capable transceiver with independent dual receivers and have decided you want to go with the ICOM for various personal reasons. So a 7610 with 100 watts or a 7760 with 200 watts, and while many hands will say that the 200 watts makes a difference, you're only talking uh, about three decibels of increase in signal strength between a 100 watt and a 200 watt radio or about a half an S unit on the S meter. So in this scenario, uh, just to give you, you know, the information here, um, you're going to buy uh, a new 7610, and then you're going to, and then you're going to go ahead and buy a used amplifier, so you can get that more than 100 watts. So a new, um, a new um, 7610 costs three thousand three hundred ninety-nine dollars ninety-five cents. I think I took this both from Gigaparts and HRO as of August twenty-fifth, twenty twenty-five. And when I was looking up amplifiers, I was looking up uh, the cheapest used amplifier that looked seemed like they were in good condition. And these amplifiers could be anywhere from five hundred to a thousand watts. 
but I saw the range and I'll put it on screen of what I found. I think the range was between $710 and like $1,000. Um, so I took the meaning of that, um, which is about $905. So a new 7610 for $33.99.95 plus uh, paying for a used amplifier, hopefully obviously in good condition, of about $905. Puts you at $4,304.95 for both those. And you'll save um, $1,695 over purchasing a new 7760. So those, that's my uh, humble opinion on whether you want to upgrade from a 7610 to a 7760 or just outright buy a 7610 or a 7760, uh, taking all those things into consideration. So anyway, guys, I thank you uh, so much for watching this video. I thank you uh, for sticking with me. And I'll have more ham radio videos coming out here in the future. So you guys take care, and I'll see you in the next ones. 7-3.